Here's a cool trick he can do with a plastic water bottle. Grab both ends of the bottle and twist them towards each other. Pressure will start building up inside, so when you release the lid, this happens. You know what this reminds me of? Rockets. Absolute engineering marvels that the world's top scientists spend years creating. And I want to build one from scratch, using items around my house. What could go wrong? Three, two, one. Wait, did it land in the way? Where is it? John, rocket is this is a cardboard tube. Hold on, let me just... There we go. I reckon I can use it for the main body tube of the rocket if I find a way to make it stronger. But there's a problem. I have no idea how to make a rocket, which is kind of essential when you're trying to build a rocket from scratch. So apparently, there isn't that much information online when it comes to making model rockets. So I guess I'll just have to use my brain and figure things out along the way. We start off by creating a quick 3D model using OpenRocket, a software that allows you to easily design and simulate rockets before you even build them. Now I'm going to be making this rocket only using items from around my house. So the first thing I did was leave my house and go look for something to help strengthen the main body. And soon enough, I found one of these plastic golf tube protectors that should work perfectly by sliding into the main cardboard tube from earlier. Before we can go any further, we need a way to actually power the rocket and make it work. Now there are many ways of doing this, but one of the easiest is probably by using solid rocket motors. I even found a few tutorials that teach you how to make these at home, but looks like I won't be doing any of that anytime soon. Instead, I'll be using one of these D-sized Estaz rocket motors I bought from a local hobby shop that provide an impressive amount of thrust for their size. After looking around my house, I was able to find a smaller cardboard tube that fit perfectly around the rocket motor. Oops, that wasn't really safe. By adding layers of cardboard around the tube, the engine mount is now finished and able to fit tightly inside the main body. I also created this locking mechanism using a paper clip that allows you to easily slide in the rocket motor and then lock it into place. The nose cone was made by shaping a section of the main body into a cone-shaped piece and then covering that with a few layers of paper mache. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not exactly sure if this nose cone will survive the high g-forces of the rocket, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now that I have my nose cone, guess what I'm gonna do with it? One, paint it. Two, find a way to make it stronger. Three, sand it down so it's a bit smoother. Well, actually, none of those, because instead, I decided to chuck it around super aggressively way too many times just for a single transition. The nose cone actually turned out to be surprisingly sturdy, and it looks quite nice too after I covered it with this thin layer of gloss that made it nice and shiny. By using the tip of a plastic water bottle, I was able to create a system that allows you to easily remove the nose cone from the rest of the body for easy transportation and storage purposes. Now the system for removing the nose cone from the main body actually turned out to work quite well, so I decided to use a similar system for the lower section containing the engine. I cut off a piece of tubing from the main body, and this time I used a larger plastic bottle so I could create a stronger mounting system. As you can see here, I had to create and assemble quite a few parts just to create the engine bay, and I kind of overcomplicated things a bit. You see, we need the rocket to have a slow descent so it doesn't just turn into a ballistic missile and slam straight into the ground. To do this, we need a parachute to be deployed when the rocket reaches its peak altitude, which is also its slowest point, so the sheer speed doesn't just rip everything apart. And the way we deploy the parachute is by creating an internal explosion. Now this actually isn't as bad as it sounds. The rocket motor I'm using comes in with a built-in injection charge that creates a quick explosion exactly 5 seconds after the engine cuts out, which according to the simulation is about the right time for deployment. And all the energy from the explosion is transferred out the body tube as it pushes off the nose cone and deploys the parachute, so it doesn't really cause damage to the rocket. At least that's what's supposed to happen. Now I was afraid that the heat from the explosion would mess up the internals, so I covered the entire engine section with multiple layers of tin foil, which was super painful and time consuming to do. And all of this was completely unnecessary because the explosion would only last for a fraction of a second, so I just wasted a bunch of time and effort for nothing. The fins were cut out and made from two layers of cardboard and a layer of cardstock in between. The sides were then sanded down to create an airfoil edge that could pierce through the air, allowing the rocket to go faster.
After assembling and putting everything together, I gave the rocket a simple but modern looking paint job, featuring a black and white color scheme, a few simple patterns along the side of the body, and stripes along the fins. The whole rocket was then covered with a layer of special glue that makes things stronger while also giving the surface a nice and shiny finish. I also needed a parachute, so I made one from a plastic tablecloth and put it inside the body of the rocket. A few plastic straws were also glued onto the side of the rocket so that it could be guided by the launch pad during the start of the launch. And just like that, the rocket is finally finished. But wait, there's more. To actually launch the rocket, we need a launch pad to guide the rocket and a launch controller so we can safely ignite the engine from a distance. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to make a launch controller, but there wasn't that much information online. So once again, I decided to just use my brain and figure things out myself. I basically ended up just soldering two super long wires onto the ends of a battery. So when you connect the positive and negative ends of the wires to an igniter, current will start traveling through the circuit which will then heat up the igniter, sparking it into a flame. And that in turn turn would ignite the engine and cause the rocket to launch. I also added two safety switches and a red button that would be used to trigger the ignition. The entire circuit would then be placed inside a box that I painted and decorated to act as a protective casing. As for the launch pad, I was planning to make my own using this lawn metal rod, but then I realized that one of my friends had an actual launch pad made specifically for launching model rockets. Well guess what, it's not your launch pad, it's our launch pad. With the launch pad and launch controller successfully acquired, I can confidently say that we are finally ready to perform the launch. After waiting for a day with decent weather and low wind speeds, I went out with a few friends to an open field in an attempt to launch the rocket. But then, it started raining and since I was too lazy to go all the way back home, I decided to just continue with the launch. Three, two, one. What? Well, that was an epic fail, and when I got home, I realized the only reason the rocket didn't work was because of this tiny wire that got disconnected inside the launch controller. I also wasted all my igniters, so I tried making my own. Well, that didn't work. I was forced to buy new igniters at a local hobby shop, and they were insanely overpriced, but at least they work. With the launch controller fixed, we should be able to finally have a successful launch. I think. Probably. Maybe. continuing stealing um, the frame We went back to the same location a few days later and lucky for us, the weather was actually quite decent this time. As I started setting things up and preparing for the big launch, I thought about all the possible scenarios that could play out. Would the rocket actually work or would this yet again be another failure? It was only a matter of time before we found out. The rocket was slid onto its launch pad with the engine inserted and primed. The launch controller was set up and armed, and with the cameras rolling and the drone in the air, it was finally time for the moment of truth. Getting ready for launch. Launching in five, four, three, two, one. Where did it go? I see it. It actually worked. Let's go. It worked, guys. Where did it go? How did that work? That was so satisfying. Oh my god. I'm tracking it with my drum. This is bad. Wait, did it land? Where, where is it? Although the rocket went a bit further than expected, it was able to be safely recovered with no damage whatsoever. I also got some super cinematic footage of the drone following the parachute as it glided gracefully towards the ground. But it would only be a few seconds later when I realized the harsh reality. No, I didn't film it! Somehow, I forgot to press record, so all that cinematic drone footage I thought I got didn't even Five, exist. Four, On the bright side, I did have another rocket motor, so I decided to launch the rocket a second time. This time, I actually managed to get some pretty incredible drone footage. But then, this happened. John, your rocket is falling. What is it falling? 
Yon, the parachute didn't work, it's falling. Even after getting disconnected from the parachute and falling from a height of more than 200 meters, the rocket somehow managed to stay completely intact, only suffering minor damage. On the other hand, because all the weight was gone, the nose cone and parachute glided far out of sight before we had any time to catch up to it. I tried searching for the parachute by looking for patches of red using my drone, but that didn't work out so well. Shoot. That wasn't it. Eventually, it started getting dark and the drone was losing power, so I was forced to bring it back in and give up the search. I went back to the location of the launch a day later, and somehow I was able to find the nose cone and parachute. Even after sitting through an entire night of rain, the nose cone was completely intact with only a few scratches on the tip. Even though a few mistakes were made along the way, the rocket was able to be completely recovered, and this was definitely one of the coolest things I've ever made. Oh wait, what's this? And with that being said, thanks for watching.